Hi everybody, this is Bastian and today we're going to look how we can create double pawns for our opponent and then see how we can play against them. So the opening used is the Alekine defense. So I'm playing black. The game starts with e4, knight to f6, so we're seeing the Alekine defense. e5, now knight to d5 and d4. So um, this is a hypermodern opening and white has taken control of the center with pawns. However, he has um, overextended his pawn island and wasted a few moves on the e5 pawn. So what I can do now is play d6 and if the pawns are traded, white has wasted a lot of time in uh, moving his e5 pawn forward with no advantage left. White plays knight to f3. So if we exchange now, um, white will still have a nice outpost, a knight outpost on e5. So I'm not exchanging, although that's playable. I play knight to um, c6 instead. Now, normally in the modern variation of the Alekine, a typical move is bishop to g4, which will be played, just not yet. I respond symmetrically. White is defending his two pawns, and now I am attacking both pawns. So we can see I have two attackers on the e5 pawn. White has two defenders. White plays c4. I retreat the knight to b6, and now the knights are in a position that's common in Alekine, with knights on the c and b file. Now, if d5 is played, I can grab the pawn. So, white cannot continue his pawn push indefinitely. If instead c5 is played, I can take the pawn, pawn recaptures, queen takes queen and king recaptures, and then perhaps knight to d7, attacking both pawns. and white has lost castling privileges. So the knights are relatively safe and there can't be any more pawn pushes at this point. White continues with knight to c3, keeps on developing. Finally the bishop to g4 move. And black's plan is very simple. He plans to uh, exchange um, or trade off the knight with the bishop then there is one less defender on the pawn on e5. Then black can grab a free pawn. White plays... Well, let's see what white can play. If white plays a random move, say a3, I can take the knight. Then there are two possibilities, either queen or pawn recaptures. Let's say pawn recaptures. Then pawn takes pawn, pawn recaptures, queen takes queen check, king recaptures, knight takes pawn. And we can see that black is up uh, a free pawn. And white has um, isolated double pawns on the f file. Also, his king is unsafe. If instead of bishop takes uh, pawn takes bishop, white can play queen takes bishop, but then once again, um, knight takes pawn, and white is down a pawn. So if not a random move like a3 is played, white can try bishop to e2. But then we can see the bishop is overloaded because it's needed to protect f3 and also the pawn on c4 that's under attack. And this is the point of the Alekine to um, undermine the overextended pawn center of white. 
And now, of course, if bishop takes, bishop recaptures. Pawn takes pawn, then pawn recaptures. Queen takes queen, knight recaptures. Again, I get a free pawn on c4. With a pawn on attack on e5. So, we can see that the bishop to g4 move is very powerful and it's difficult to defend against um, for white. So, white plays bishop to f4 and the reason why bishop to f4 is played is to add another defender to the e5 pawn after um, the knights will become exchanged. So the game continues with pawn takes pawn then pawn recaptures, queen takes queen check and rook recaptures. Now white has a rook on the open file under uh, some conditions I can uh, castle queenside that's no longer the case because I'm moving through check so at this point I could take the, um, the knight and white recaptures with the pawn and we can see that white's king isn't very safe because um, it's a bit in the open and there's a there are lines open to attack the king cannot castle uh, kingside into safety anymore but there is no rush in doing so um, since I cannot castle queenside I want to castle kingside instead which means this bishop needs to move which means this pawn needs to move so I play e6 and there's not much that white can do immediately to prevent the doubling of the pawns because this knight is pinned and the bishop to e2 move is failing because again this bishop will then be needed to protect both the knight and the pawn on c4 bishop to e2 was played in the game and I play bishop to b4, developing another piece, getting ready to castle. Now this knight is pinned, and this prevents the move b3 to prevent the pawn on c4, because then of course the knight is hanging. White castles, I take out the knight, pawn takes bishop, so I'm creating the first doubled and isolated pawns on the c-file then bishop takes knight and we can see I'm sacrificing the bishop pair so both bishops in order to create two rows of doubled pawns and now white has a choice to make either he loses material and recaptures with the bishop or he creates a double set of isolated pawns for himself White recaptures with the pawn. Material is equal, but with these two doubled isolated pawns, it will be become very hard for White to defend himself. So I could castle kingside now, but there's no longer a point um, in doing so, so because um, there are too many weaknesses and I can uh, attack White immediately. So the first weakness now is that this bishop is needed to protect the pawn on e5 and the king is on a half open file so g5 is played attacking the bishop now if the bishop retreats say to g3 to keep protecting the pawn I can play h5 and continue with the pawn storm if h4 to block the pawns and create more retreat then pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn. I can take on the pawn on e5. And we can see I have another attacker on c4. And white's king has become completely exposed. So retreating will cause complications.
for white. White instead grabs the free pawn, abandoning protection of the pawn on e5. But now rook to g8, pinning the bishop. h4 to protect the bishop. And now h6, and white's bishop is lost, although he gets two pawns for the piece for the moment. f4, adding another defender. Pawn takes bishop, pawn recaptures. Notice that um, the e5 pawn is now protected. I play king to e7, activating the rook on a8. Rook to d2, perhaps white is thinking of a battery. And now knight takes pawn anyways, because the knight cannot be recaptured, for if say pawn takes knight, I can play rook takes pawn check, forcing king to h1, rook h8 check, so now we can see the point of um, opening up the 8th rank, and with the in-between bishop to h5 move, rook takes bishop is checkmate. So, I can grab the pawn and the knight cannot be recaptured. Notice that once again, the knight to e5 move is attacking one of the double pawns. White plays c5 instead, attacking the knight. Now, knight to d5 bringing the knight into safety and also blocking the open file. Notice that the knight on d5 is now forking two of the doubled pawns and white has run out of ways uh, to protect them and is instead hoping for a counter-attack and regain a pawn on b7. Rook to b1 threatening to attack b7 on the half open file. Knight takes pawn on f4. Rook takes pawn. Now rook takes pawn check. King to f1. Rook to h8. White plays the in between move. Rook takes uh, pawn check. Let's see if something else is played. If say a3 is played, of course we have a back rank mate. So, rook takes pawn check, king flees to f6, king to e1, hoping to add protection, rook to g1 check, bishop to f1, and now a rook sacrifice, rook takes bishop, forcing the recapture. King takes rook leading to a back rank mate with rook to h1. This is a very simple example in uh, the Alekine and it demonstrates nicely how we can create double pawns and use that to our advantage. So I hope you liked this video. Please leave a comment and have a great evening.